This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It may not be the world's best field, but there is still money to be won this week with the Honda Classic and PGA. So Allie McCann is going to swing by, help us break down this week's event and get you ready for the Honda Classic over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Allie McCann. You can find her on Twitter at Allie I. McCann. Check out her, all of her work. Over on FanDuel TV and the FanDuel social media channels, Ali, it is the Honda Classic. We are coming off of one of those stacked events this past week. I saw that John Rom was unkind to you as he has been unkind to a lot of people this year, except for the John Rom backers. So have you recovered uh, from John Rom doing John Rom things this weekend? The alarm's going off. I apologize there. Um, <laughs> John Rom really has a way of getting under my skin, let me tell you. But um, <laughs> It was a rough it was a rough week for me i had max homa outright grabbed him at 21 to 1 i believe he was at and you know fantastic weekend for him but he just he didn't get it done and unfortunately that happens but here we are we keep I mean, we keep going into the next week like we had brandon gadula on the show last week his outright picks were patrick cantlay and wills Torres. they finished three four so oh. between you and brandon you had two three four all covered all you needed was Rom to be like mortal and we could have been fine. Yeah. But like, that's not how John Rom, John Rom operates. Apparently. No, John Rom this year, he is one of those guys. You're just, it's impossible to stop him. And he's not a guy you're going to come out and bet. You know, you can't, you can't come out and pick the favorite in a field. Right. So as much as it sucks, it's just like, do your thing. Hopefully we get our weeks in the upcoming weeks. But, and I had Patrick Hanley as a top 20 finish as well. So, you know, easy cash there. I cashed there and I also cashed Max Homa top 20, even though I had him outright. So I went two for three in the top 20 field, but man, an outright would have been better. I mean, that's like the the luxury of the the non outright markets is you don't got to worry about John Rom. He can only fill one of those slots all by himself. And mm -hmm. you would think eventually he'll slow down. I say that and I don't know if I fully believe it, but I kind of hope it happens eventually because like there's a lot of fun golfers on the tour right now. We want some shine on those guys for sure, but uh, John Rom, just a master. We're going to talk to Allie about her read on this week's Honda Classic. Not the same level of field as last week, not the same uh, number of names in the field, but still some pretty fun golfers. We'll break that down and get her uh, betting process for PGA as well in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. These also do go up over on the FanDuel YouTube page after the fact. So search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts or check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page to get these each and every weekday. We have NHL and also talking NBA futures tomorrow with Austin Swain. NBA is back Thursday, so Tom Vecchio is on then to break down that. And then we'll talk more EPL coming up on Friday with Austin Cass. But for now, let's dive in here and talk about Allie, because Allie, this is our first time having you on the show. So kind of want to get to know you a bit and let our, our listeners get to know you a bit, too. Now, you're at FanDuel TV right now. You've been there pretty much since the launch of the channel, I believe. But what first. got you to FanDuel TV? Where were you before that? Yeah, so I feel like this is always a question. I'm like, where do I where do I start? Um, you know, but I graduated from Tembo back in 2019. I took some time off, and then global pandemic hit. And you know, after we got out of that, I I got my first job in the industry with the St. Louis Cardinals AAA baseball affiliate, the Memphis Redbirds. And uh, oh, cool. so I was there for a season. And after that, I was kind of like, what is next? And I I signed with an agent, and he was like, hey, you know sports betting is kind of on the rise. I think we should check this out. And so I got hired by a company by the name of Run Pure Sports. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, they taught me everything I needed to know in the world of betting. And, uh, you know, one once football season ended, I was kind of in a rut because I, you know, I'm not really big in the NBA. So um, I sat down with my boss at the time. He's like, you should check out golf betting. And um, yeah. I got super into it. And i Feel, I feel confidently that that's, you know, kind of what brought me to FanDuel TV today, everything I kind of put into the world of golf betting. And so here we are. 
Yeah, uh, run pure sports. I, I I will do. I am see a lot of FanDuel like DFS live finals, and at all those you can see like run pure sports like T-shirts and hats all throughout like participants and stuff like that in the crowd. So oh. very familiar with them, and you're learning from good people. And I think that's kind of like the the key is making sure like obviously we all learn this stuff, we all take it in, but learning from like people who know what they're talking about is is key. And obviously they do. So I think that's that's yeah. definitely a good way to get to get cooking with that. Yes. Yeah, no, they, they definitely got me to where I am and I wouldn't be here without them. So I'm forever grateful for them, especially uh, when it comes to my love for golf. So, yeah. And it's a fun time to be a golf fan because we got all these elevated events. We've got <laughs> baseball just around the corner as well. So kind of, I feel like uh, it's your time to cook right now. Yeah, no, this right now until about October, I am in my element. So I am loving this right now. Golf, you know, helps, you know, the buildup in between football and uh, baseball. Yeah. And once baseball's here, I get golf and baseball at the same time. So it's best right. of both worlds for me. That's awesome. Now you said you were with the Redbirds. Uh, what were you doing when you were with them back in the day? So I originally got hired to do content for the team. And then because of COVID guidelines, oh. we weren't allowed to interview the players. So Yikes. I was basically doing like food promotion videos in the ballpark. Wow. I know it wasn't, wasn't the best, but they did share a stadium with a uh, USL soccer team, 901 FC. So I was able to do a lot of football or yeah, well, I guess it is football yeah. <laughs> soccer content with the players, kind of getting to know the players, fun stuff like that. And then I would also film standups on my own time in regards to, you know, the baseball players, like fake standups, you know, yeah, who's yeah. on tonight, you know, what, what can you expect? And, Ultimately, I just used all of those video videos to sign with my agent and get into the sports betting world. And that's effectively what you're doing with FanDuel TV, too, is uh, getting those quick updates, um, the action updates to let people know what you're seeing in the betting market and stuff like that. And including those those action updates is some golf stuff. So let's talk about your golf betting process. You talked about how you had been honing that in over the past couple of years. And we're going to talk about the, the Honda Classic for today. So before you dove into the Honda Classic and started to fill out your bet slip, what was your process like in what are you looking at? Um, you know, what, what does your overall process for golf look like? So golf, if in my opinion, it um, is probably the hardest sport to bet on, <laughs> you know, anything that I have experience in. So a lot of it comes with following it on a weekly basis. So from Thursday to Sunday, you, you gotta be locked in. You gotta be watching these guys where they're at in their game. And also I listen to the broadcasters and then once that's pretty much done, I'm talking, you know, or I'm listening to podcasts and, and reading articles. And then about Monday night is when I really dive into my my takes. Um, there's a site by the name of Fantasy National. Oh, yeah. So you, you're familiar with it. Oh, yeah. I've, so, used, I've given them, I've probably put several people through college with the ad revenue from page views on Fantasy National that I've given them <laughs> throughout the that. years. I love that. Yeah, no, Fantasy National has become my best friend in terms of golf betting. Uh First and foremost, you have to know where you're playing, you know, the the course. You have to have an understanding of the course, of what it looks like for the upcoming week. So does that course favor guys who are long off the tee, good approach players, guys who are great with the putter? Once you kind of have that idea, I dive into Fantasy National and then I'm looking at the field. And you can look at where guys rate out in the field over the last 12 rounds, 24 rounds, 50 rounds. I always sit at 24 rounds. I feel like it's a good idea of, you know, where a guy is in terms of everyone else. And um, it allows you to build your own custom model. So, you know, bogey avoidance, if that's important at a course that week, or strokes gain off the tee, strokes gain on approach, uh, wherever they rate out in the field. Now, of course, the Honda Classic is, it's it's a rough, it's a sure. rough week. And <laughs> however, um, it's definitely one of the hardest courses on tour. So I like to basically, you know, look at guys, since the field isn't as competitive, if guys are worse than sitting at top 20 in a certain area, I'm not really looking at them this week. Um, but in a more elevated event, like last week, if a guy's sitting within the top 40, I think he's worth, worth a look. And you were talking about the past 24 rounds. That actually is a key number. Uh, Brandon Gadula, again, our, my colleague here at number fire has done studies around at what point different numbers stabilize. And for a lot of like, the the primary numbers your stroke screen off the tee stroke screen approach it is at 24 rounds that's where they stabilize you're getting a good read on you know about six events or so depending on made cuts 
you can see who has been golfing really well in that time. And that actually is a, a good point to stop at because you're getting a good read on form. Um, and I think that that is a, you know, for other stuff, maybe a bit, a bit longer, but 24 rounds is a good number for a lot of those uh, primary strokes gain stats. Now you mentioned the difficulty of this course, PGA national, the host for the Honda classic. And it is a tough course. You don't see a lot of low scores here. So when you're looking at this course, what numbers are you digging into in terms of what matters most for golfers you want to bet on? Right. So, you know, you and I had spoken a little bit before we hopped on and I didn't really do a deep dive like I normally do into a lot of events, but you know, this week, because it is such a difficult course, there's a lot of water that comes in, into play. So good approach play is something that you're going to want to be paying attention to this week with all of those hazards. And um, yeah, so I, I think that my main focus this week is looking at guys approach play. And the good thing is there are still guys in this field who have decent approach play, maybe not compared to, you know, your Rory's, your Rom's, your JT's and stuff like that. But like, there's some decent approach players in the field as well. So you're just kind of like looking at approach and trying to, you know, I think that that's, that is helpful too, for this kind of field, because if you're good in approach, you're a good overall golfer. And I feel like for this kind of field, if it's weaker, you kind of just want the best golfers. I know that sounds so simplistic, so right. simplistic, but in a field like this, it is kind of necessary just to consider overall golf game and approach is probably going to do that for you most of the way. Exactly. Like I you know, said earlier, a course like this, it, I'm not really looking at guys who rate past the top 20 in certain events like approach play, or I'm, I'm sorry, in certain categories like approach play. Right. Yeah. So, if they're outside the top 20 in this kind of field, that's probably not going to say a whole lot about them. Yeah, okay. no, no. Not. <laughs> well, let's take a look at this field here for the Honda Classic then. Um, no outrights for this week because like no. you said, it's not really the, the 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 market you're looking at this week. Instead, you want to focus on some top 20 bets. So over at FanDuel Sports, but when you look at the top 20 markets for this week, Allie, mm -hmm. any guys standing out to you as being good values there? Yeah, so I'm going to give you uh, three guys here and okay. then I, I put them out on FanDuel TV as well. But uh, I'm first up looking at Robbie Shelton, which is not a name that I... I don't think I've ever picked Robbie Shelton to finish within the top 20, um, but here we are. So he's got two top 10 finishes and one top 20 finish in his last five starts, which goes a long way uh, looking at the fact that he's obviously in some good form right now. And I mentioned the importance of approach shots this week and a big chunk of those approach shots that guys are going to take are going to come from the 125 to 200 yard range. And over the last 24 rounds, he sits at eighth in the field on approach shots from 150 to 175 yards. So Robbie Shelton is my first top 20 pick of the week. I believe he's at what plus 160 is that? Yeah, plus 260 right now uh, oh, for, for Shelton to finish top yeah, 20. It's yeah. a pretty good number. Yeah. yeah, it's a really good number. So, and he's my longest shot down the board uh, for top 20. So next up, I'm looking at Denny McCarthy. Um, he's a guy I go to often for top 20 picks. And in a field like this, it's a perfect fit, in my opinion. So he's got two top 20s in his last three starts. And He's got a fairly decent course history here, which sometimes decent course history weighs more um, depending on the week, but he finished tied for third here in 2021. And it's also worth noting that since we're entering the Florida swing again, Bermuda greens are back in play. And uh, you know, he has one of the best putters in this field when it comes to those putting surfaces. So Denny McCarthy is my number two top 20 pick. Yeah, McCarthy plus 160 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think that with McCarthy, another key thing that I like this week is when you're talking about him in a field like the, let's say for the, the WM Phoenix Open, you've got bombers there and he's going to lose distance in the field. But with a lot of the non, with a lot of the biggest hitters not at this field, he's not going to lose as much off the tee. Now he's like, okay, off the tee in general, but like you take away the distance he loses there, and makes that less of a less of a negative. I think that his putter can shine a bit more. So I think like from a course fit perspective, McCarthy does fit that as well. Yes. Yeah. And again, uh, he's played this course well. So yeah. And having having course history at a course like this, I definitely think is uh, worthy of noting. And then um, my last guy, I'm going to go with Jonathan Vegas. He's another guy I never never really give much love to, but uh, you know he seems to be rounding into form as of late, and he checks pretty much every box uh, when it comes to what's important this week uh, on this course. And um, a few, you know, like he is sitting at first in the field in strokes gained T to green over the last 24 rounds. And 
to me, that was like, oh, that's it. You know, right. I think that right there was like the kicker uh, in regards to me picking him. So Jonathan Vegas is my number three pick for a top 20. And that's that's all I got on the board for bets this week. Yeah, Vegas is plus 150. And honestly, like Vegas is fun because what he can do despite his hideous putting. Uh, so if you look at data golf, they've oh. got, um, I use their true show ski in the past six months. And in the past six months, Vegas is at 0. 0.90 strokes game per round relative to, to like a world average golfer that ranks seventh best in this field. That is despite losing almost a stroke putting per round in that time. He's had, he's made the cut each of his past three events, even though he has been, somehow worse than usual on the greens. Like it's hard to get worse than, than Vegas typically is. He's been awful, but like, because he's so good everywhere else, it doesn't matter. And yes. when you put that in a field where his ball striking is going to be even better compared to the field than it usually is. Yes. I think that Vegas is very fun. Um, It's funny. You say the, how you reference the putting because how I said he checks almost every box. In right. What <laughs> The putting was the one thing that he yeah. does not pick off. But again, like you mentioned, the ball striking and everywhere else, I like him in a bunch of different models. So we're going to roll the dice on him as a top 20. Uh, rolling the dice in Vegas has never gone wrong <laughs> by any means. <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that, but that was a good play on words. I, I I, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna say it was subliminally in your head. It was uh it was intentional there. But um Vegas, I think honestly, like outright market 34 to one at FanDuel, I did I'm not there. And I'm I agree with you where I'm not really seeing a lot of value in the outright market this week, but yeah. like I think he's one of the guys I consider Aaron Wise is kind of the other one that I think is like worth the consideration there. But yeah. like Vegas is the closest I've gotten, I think, to like being yeah. enthused about someone there right now. Yeah. So I pretty sure I told you Shane Lowry is like my guilty pleasure in yeah. golf. I love Shane Lowry. He has never come through for an outright for me, but <laughs> week after week, I am there like trying to make a case for him. And uh, yep. if if I had to pick, I would say if, if you're going to pick one of the favorites to come out on top this week, I would say Shane Lowry, but that's, that's me. We're, so, but I'm not, yeah. I'm not, you know, condoning betting on right. it. Right. Saying. Exactly. <laughs> so because you said that, and specifically phrased that way, he's guaranteed to win this week. You realize that, right? Because, I, because you know, that's how it works. If yeah. we're like, oh, I kind of like this guy, but I can't bet it myself. Not quite there. Guaranteed win. If you feel good about it, it's he's going to finish second to John Rom. That's just the way things work. John Rom's not in the field this week. So thank I know God. he'll still find a way to win. Never doubt him, Allie. Never doubt John Rom, even when he's not in the field. That's not how this works. So I've learned and uh guaranteed win it's that is funny. Allie mccann make sure you check her out over on twitter at ally i mccann find her work over at fanduel tv and on the fanduel social feeds ally is a blast talking to you getting to know you for today uh have fun with the honda classic hopefully we can get you on to talk about a uh, more star-studded field here in the near, near future i will i will for sure be down for that i appreciate you having me on all righty that is ally mccann again check her out on twitter at ally i mccann and we'll have her back out here on covering the spread again later on to talk about some better fields in the pga but again the money is the same uh the top 20s from her robbie shelton plus 260 danny mccarthy plus 160 and jonathan Vegas plus 150 i think all those are really fun recommendations now before we wrap up for today gotta go back through last week here on the show and we'll start things off with golf where we had brandon gadula on to break down uh the Genesis Invitational talked about this value before, but three outrights from Brandon. He had Rory McIlroy nine to one, Patrick Cantlay twenty six to one, Will Zalatoris at thirty four to one. Obviously, John Rahm won, but Cantlay and Zalatoris did keep things close. Cantlay was three strokes back; he finished third. Zalatoris was four shots back; he finished fourth. So they got close, but John Rahm is a robot, so. It happens. The two non outrights for Brandon were Keegan Bradley, top 10 at six to one. Kirk Kitayama, top 20 at 490. Both guys missed the cut, uh, but the outrights were nice and close for Brandon. Uh, hopefully, you had some non outrights in those guys because they did do well. Allie mentioned she had Cantlay for a top 20 in that one. We had Austin Swain on to talk UFC Vegas 69. You can find Austin on Twitter at A Swain 3. Really good week from Austin here. He hit his two money lines. Those were Aaron Blanchfield plus 110 against Jessica Andrade. Other one was Jamal Emmers plus 136 against Kusain Askab Askabov. I probably butchered that anyway. Um, but they both won. 
Emmers via decision, Blanchfield via submission for those on Austin. So uh, plus 110 and plus 136 in those two hits. The two props were Mera Bueno Silva to win by submission and Jim Miller to win by submission. Bueno Silva did that. That was plus 220. Miller lost. Uh, his submission was plus 500, but really good week for Austin. Three and one in the wins, uh, with the wins being plus 110, plus 136, plus 220. Good week from Austin. Good calls by him. We'll have more UFC via Austin later on for bigger events. Nothing this week because we're going to focus more on the uh, NBA and NHL tomorrow on the show, but good calls from Austin on those. Our EPL guest last week was Austin Cass. Find him on Twitter at Austin Cass. His two bets were on Brentford to win in 90 minutes with an even Tony uh, goal and Newcastle to beat Liverpool. Brentford finished in a draw with Crystal Palace, so no win there. Newcastle lost 2-0 versus Liverpool. Tough week on that one, but, you know, Austin had a good week uh, week before, specifically talking about the Man City future. So um, we'll get him back here on Friday for a rebound on the EPL side. Finally, our guest for the Daytona 500 was Dr. Nick Giffen of the Action Network. Find him on Twitter at Rotodoc. Nick wanted outrights on Eric Jones, 33 to 1, AJ Allmendinger, 50 to 1, and then Todd Gilliland, 100 to 1. None of them won. It was Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who was 30 ish to 1, I believe, but Gilliland. Good CLV there. He closed at 38 to one from a hundred. He was great Thursday night. Um, that shortened his odds a bunch. I had him at like 200 or 150 uh, at certain times. Eventually got down to 38 to one. So good CLV, but CLV doesn't pay the bill bills. Unfortunately, good call by, by Nick, just a bummer. It didn't work out. Uh, Dinger was in contention pretty late. He generally ran pretty well. Couldn't close the deal there. The two manufacturer bets for Nick were Gilliland uh, 41 for top Ford and then Christopher Bell plus 650 for top Toyota and Bell did hit that. He finished third among all uh, among all drivers, the highest ranked Toyota there. So plus 650 the hit for Bell. And as long as you scale things properly, profitable week there for you across all the rec recommendations by Nick via the win for Christopher Bell. So nice job by Nick on those uh, good calls for Daytona on him. And hopefully a profitable week for you it was not for me in Daytona, but we are back again for Fontana this upcoming week. We'll have some NASCAR on the show. I'm probably going to wait until FanDuel posts non-outrights. The only like outright I'm itching to bet right now is Eric Jones, 30 to 1. So hopefully once they get some non-outrights up, I'll talk some NASCAR later on this week. We'll stick that at the end of the show to get the thoughts out there on that. But uh, not as much of a, an expansive week this week with no with it not being the Daytona 500, but obviously uh, we'll still talk to NASCAR here on the show at the end of the programs. Do not forget that the midway point of the NBA season is here now, and it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. Make every moment more a FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in President select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text open y And in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Want to give a big thank you once again to Allie McCann for swinging by, breaking down her thoughts on the Honda Classic and getting her insights on PGA betting as well. Find Allie on Twitter at Allie I McCann and find her over on FanDuel TV as well. 
If you've gotten any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. We are back once again tomorrow. Talk some NBA futures and talk about a three-game NHL slate with Austin Swaim. Back here once again. Subscribe to Covering the Spread to get that as posted. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>